Greetings. This Bible study is going to be on prayer. Sadly neglected prayer. Do you know that there are prayers that we are told to make in the Bible? And there are prayers that were some people were told not to make. I am sorry that my last Bible study on Messianic Jews and the Trojan horses, I believe that they are, ended so abruptly. I believe my computer is being hacked. I really do. It just, you know, I'm not totally incompetent with computers. I go to the, uh, I can check and see what's being running on my computer and my computer will just locks up and freezes and then there's shows no programs hardly running at all but the memory is you know used to all used up and then I run antivirus I run anti-spyware and it shows nothing and it happens at certain times of the day or I should say evening when uh, certain people in certain countries are available in the Middle East and uh, possibly they're in charge. So just in case you don't know it, Intel, the largest computer chip manufacturer in the world, uh, their headquarters and factories are in uh, the Zionist state. Matter of fact, McAfee antivirus is over in the Zionist state also. I didn't know that. So I don't know, but they have, uh, they've been able to hack into people's computers through a back door through the chips since the 90s that I know of. So my uh, computer was just almost to the point where it was locked up, and I abruptly stopped the Bible study on Messianic Jews, the Trojan horse. So I'm going to do a part two, but I wanted to do this on the prayers. So, and uh, do me a favor, pray for me. My um, couple days, I've been having problems with my hands, carpal tunnel. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to cut back on maybe not so much making Bible studies, but comments on the internet and posting news and what have you. Um, maybe that's what the Lord wants. I don't know. So. Let's take a look at prayers people were told not to make. Now, in Jeremiah, I uh, noticed pre-trippers never read the book of Jeremiah because it's a book of rebuke. And God punished his chosen people, Israel, for their sins. And if you think the Antichrist Zionists over in the Middle East are the same people that the Bible's talking about, well, you're entitled to your opinion, but I don't believe that for a moment. Now, obviously, this is not talking about all the Jews. Let's turn to John chapter 10, verses 23 to verses 29. King James Bible, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. This was Herod's temple. Herod was an evil, wicked person, and uh, you know he was the one that killed all the children in Bethlehem, trying to kill Jesus when he was a child. Uh, well, actually, his father did. But the, um, according to Josephus, he was an Edomite, an Idumean, uh, the people of God's curse. I did an entire study on that, if you're interested. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because 
ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Boo! But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you? Wow! My sheep hear my voice. Who are the, who are the sheep that hear his voice? Christians, right? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, obviously, he's not talking about all the Jews, because there were a lot of Jews that became believers, and they ceased to be Jews and became what is known today as Christians. And I'm not talking about that fake garbage that you watch on the 700 Prophets of Baal Club on TV or the uh, uh, TBN. Um, some say it's the Blasphemy Network. I, some say it's the Baal Network. I take your pick. But, um, you know, so obviously he's, he's, he was just speaking to that particular group. But generally, as a whole, today, Jews are Jews because they deny that Jesus is the Christ. And by Bible definition, they are anti-Christ. I know people hate, that'll get you kicked, saying those things will get you kicked out of almost every single church, building denominational group, demon nominational group, but... Hey, it's the truth. I mean, after all, read 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So, I've heard so many churches say, well, you know, the Jews don't have the Son, but they got the Father. Well, the Bible says they're liars. It says, Whoever, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. All Jews deny Jesus, and that makes them antichrist. And if you don't believe me, call any synagogue and ask them if Jesus is the Messiah. And, obviously, they're going to say no, because... If they thought he was the Messiah, they would follow him, right? So, they wait another Messiah. So, the people in Jeremiah's time, he was sent to Judah, Jerusalem. And the Lord had had it up to, well, you can't see me, but he, he had it up to the, the top, okay? The cup of wickedness was starting to overflow, and he'd had enough. He's about to pour out his wrath against these people for their wickedness. He'd had it. So he sent Jeremiah, told Jeremiah, those of you that believe the Lord, repent, and when I'm going to send the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and those of you that believe the Lord, Turn yourselves into him and be his servants. And then those that don't believe the Lord, well, they were going to fight and be killed. And the Lord said he was, this is what he was going to do. And if you don't believe me, read the book of Jeremiah. But he was fed up. He'd had enough. So, in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16, God says the following to Jeremiah. Therefore, pray not, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Ooh. Jeremiah eleven fourteen. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. There comes a point in time 
when, well, you know, in the days of Noah, God closed the door on the ark when it started to rain. There comes a time when there is no more repentance. There's a time door, the, the, the door slammed shut. And it's the Lord's hand that does it. Jeremiah 14, 11. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. Ooh. You know, there comes a point where it's over, people. Now, after they were taken into captivity, Nebuchadnezzar came, took them into captivity. And if you want to read about some of that, you could read the book of Daniel. Daniel was one of the princes of Judah, and he was taken into captivity. He obviously believed Jeremiah. Okay? But in Jeremiah 29, verse 7, And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be, carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. Okay. So, the Lord told them to pray for the peace of the city. They're not talking about Jerusalem. They're talking about Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar. All right, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Jesus speaking. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And it goes on to say, you know, because you're going to heap, heap uh, hot coals upon their head, you know. Now there's a big difference between praying for our personal enemies He's not telling you to pray for the Lord's enemies. Don't pray for the people that are in the church of Satan, okay? You're not supposed to pray for them. Want to see why? All right. Um, a seer, S-E-E-R, and that has reference to, that's what the old, old, time word for prophet was. And the key word is S-E-E, C, -E -E -C, as in foreseeing the future, seer. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. He was a good king. Okay? So God sending a seer, a prophet, to talk to King Jehoshaphat, who was a good king. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. God's wrath was on this good king because he was helping the ungodly and he loved them. Now, if you don't know it, if I remember correctly, he was helping King Ahab, who was king of Israel. So you had Jehoshaphat, who was king of Jerusalem, king of Judah, helping King Ahab, who was king of Israel. And uh, I've made this point so many times, it's redundant, but... Israel and Judah were two different kingdoms. They weren't the same. There were times that they were the same kingdom. Back in David and Solomon's day, they were. But they split. So when you get a demon nominational preacher telling you that Israel is, uh, is Jews and Jews are Israel and Jews are Judah and this and that and the other, either their ignorance is showing or they are liars. And probably the latter. Jehoshaphat was a good king. He was helping evil, wicked King Ahab. And I'm sure he knew Ahab was wicked. But he was going to go to battle with him. 
against Ahab's enemies that the Lord had sent to punish Ahab. And King Jehoshaphat died in the battle. So God's wrath was upon him for helping those who were the enemies of the Lord. You're not supposed to pray for the Lord's enemies. We're supposed to pray for our enemies. Big difference. And if you want, read 1 Kings 16, chapter 33. And Ahab made a grove. Satanists always hang out in groves of trees, right? And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. He was bad. He was really, really bad. All right, so Matthew 5, 44. Therefore I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Sometimes that's pretty hard to do, you know? Matthew 6, verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Hmm. Contrast that with the verse pre previous. Matthew 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, Jesus used that word hypocrite and synagogues together a lot. I wonder if there's a pattern. Hmm. All right. Um, so we're supposed to go in a closet, do it secretly. Let's read verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they, sh that, that they, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Um, think about the rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. Vain repetitions. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, okay, Jesus gave what is known as the Lord's Prayer. Okay? I mean, now I've covered, I think I did this, I did another study in that. I have like 700 something studies that I've done. It's hard for me to even remember all the stuff that I've done. But he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, contrasted to the Satanist father's father who is not in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That's coming soon. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Right now his will's not being done on the earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, um, our sins. We have a sin debt. That's why Christ came, to pay a debt that he didn't know, to pay a debt that we couldn't pay. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, you know, things they've done to wrong you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So, you know, what little things people have done to us to cause us to be offended pales in comparison of the things that we've done to offend our Father in heaven. 
But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Oh, yeah. All right, Matthew 24. Probably one of the most important chapters in all the Bible. And sadly, people neglect. Oh, let's start at verse 15. Now, this was fulfilled in 70 AD when the Roman army under General Titus besieged Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. It was burned and absolutely um, obliterated. Jesus said that every stone would be cast down. There wouldn't be one stone left upon another. And of course, the Jews will lie and tell you that the Wailing Wall was part of the temple, and that's a lie. Well, either they're lying or Jesus is a liar. Take your pick. Oh, I pick Jesus not being a liar. All right, Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, and let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house ho housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. So, you know, it's probably a good idea that when things start getting rough that you have a, um, a pack, a survival type pack. You know, maybe keep it in a car, keep it with you. Because um, when this happens, you, whatever, you're, whatever you got is all you're going to have. You know, and uh, I'm going to start a um, new type channel doing that kind of information about packs and what have you, survival type equipment and gear, because the church, the future of the church is the wilderness. Pre-tribbers will fight you tooth and nail on this. They're going to be unprepared. They're going to die or they're going to serve the beast. And quite frankly, I believe the Lord's deceived a lot of them. And I'm going to do a Bible study on that, God willing. So, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Listen carefully. But pray ye, but pray ye, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. We're supposed, you know, the Bible tells you tells you to pray that your flight's not in the winter or on the, or on the Sabbath day. Do you know there's not probably not one pre-tribber in the entire world that ever would pray this prayer? Why? Well, they're 100% convinced they're not going to be here. And they believe in a thing called dispensational theology. And what that does is it slices the Bible up into little parts. Oh, well, this part of the Bible belongs to the Jews, and this part belongs to the church, and this part belongs to Israel, and this part belongs to the little green man on Mars that eats uh, green cheese. And, uh, you know, that, that's what they do. You know, there's only two, two groups of people in the world. Those in Christ and those that are not in Christ, period. There is no, you know, they, they want you to think there's all these different groups of people. No. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You are either in Christ or you're not in Christ, period. And John 3.36 makes it very clear. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, 
Do the Jews believe on the Son? No. So according to this, they're not going to see life and the wrath of God that abides upon them. And somehow churches teach that those that call themselves Jews don't even need Jesus. That they have an everlasting covenant with God the Father and, you know, they don't need Christ. That's what they'll tell you. See, when you read this, the dispensational people will say, oh, well, that was for the church. That's not for the Jews. Huh. Galatians 3.28 says there's all one in Christ. So you're either in Christ or you're not, period. I've read it many times, and I'll read it again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, 15 and 16. For ye brethren, who they talk about Christians, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus. Wow, I thought it was the Romans that killed Jesus. That's going to be another study probably, right? Who killed Jesus? Paul says it was um, the Jews. You know, Pontius Pilate didn't care. He was going to try to release Jesus, right? He tried. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Did God send the prophets to the Romans? No. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God. Hmm. And are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always. For the wrath, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Yeah, God's chosen, right? Matthew 24, 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For there shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, there was a great deal of slaughter in 70 AD when the Romans came. Okay? But, uh, you know, except those days should be shortened, no flesh should be saved. Uh, that, you know, I think 70 AD was a partial fulfillment. I think the ultimate fulfillment of this has yet to come. Matthew 24, 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Verse 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, lightning, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay? I mean, when, when he comes, that it's not going to be no secret coming. It's going to be like lightning coming out of the east, and shining even unto the west. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 